welcome ladies and gentlemen to another exciting episode of the series within the digital adoption show that we call dap upskill the podcast where we unravel the mysteries of digital transformation across various departments within any organization i am your host arya and today we've got a topic that is particularly close to the heart of every sales professional digital adoption in the sales function Sales has evolved at a breathtaking pace as we all know it and the driving force behind this evolution is digital technology from CRM systems that supercharge customer relationships to data analytics that unveil new insights the sales landscape has undergone a revolution but what we are really curious about today is how these changes are perceived by account managers and business development representative managers Our journey today is to understand how these sales personas view digital adoption. Is it a game changer that simplifies their daily tasks and helps them achieve their targets faster, or does it present new challenges that require adaptation? Are they able to forge stronger relationships with customers, or are there potential pitfalls in the digital realm? We've gathered two incredible guests who have their fingers on the pulse of this digital adoption. They'll be sharing their personal experiences, success stories, and some candid insights into how digital tools have impacted their roles and strategies. So, whether you are an account manager looking to navigate the digital landscape more effectively, or a BDR manager seeking to empower your team, this episode is a gold mine of knowledge you would not want to miss. So my friends whether you're tuning in during your morning commute or while sipping coffee at your desk get ready to embark on a journey into the world of digital adoption in the sales function as seen through the eyes of those who live and breathe it without further ado let's dive into our discussion and uncover the secrets to success in this dynamic digital age my first guest on today's podcast is Nick Retter Next journey into the digital adoption platform which is DAP Realm was a natural one. Throughout his life he's been known for his unwavering impatience when it comes to accomplishing tasks within applications. It's the pursuit of efficiency that led him to carve a niche in the DAP space as a senior account director at Wattfix. Over the past 4 years Nick has guided numerous clients towards harnessing the power of digital adoption technology to craft superior experiences for both his employees and his customers he's a true pioneer in leveraging dap to bridge the gap between users and technology ensuring that frustration turns into seamless productivity but what truly ignites nick passion is witnessing his clients' success stories he takes immense pride in the moments when they gain recognition and ascend professionally thanks to the implementation of a world class dap strategy for nick it's not just about optimizing digital tools it's about transforming careers and businesses hi nick welcome to the podcast how are you feeling today how's your day been going Hi, Arya. It's good. It's fall in New England. Anybody who's been to New England in the fall knows that it's just absolutely beautiful. The best time of the year to be here. So, yeah, it's great. How are you doing today? Fantastic. I am doing great. I am interviewing you today, so it's all good. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So, in this podcast, we discuss digital adoption and how various departments in any organizations benefit from adapting to technology in the newer ways. Okay. So you have been in this industry for quite a while now and you do not just represent a digital adoption company you have also been a dap user yourself for the longest time so can you tell our listeners some examples of how dap has made your life easier and your colleagues life easier Yeah absolutely Arya and yeah no it's very interesting as people we represent a company that provides digital adoption but we also use it we eat our own dog food so it's a really interesting conversation and <laughs> there's a lot of ways that i've seen over the last 4 years that i've benefited from digital adoption technology the first i would say is in terms of adoption so any account person you know will go into their single sign on or somewhere and they might have anywhere between 7 and 15 applications that the company invested in that is meant to help the person do their job more effectively 
And adoption just not just happen. Imagine if you've never been to a gym and you go to this enormous gym and you're trying to figure out how to use it. You probably need some assistance. That's a very basic example, but it's the same thing when it comes to technology adoption. So for example, myself and my colleagues, we have forecasting tools. We have compensation plan tools. We have content management systems. We have CRM. We have HR systems where we have to do performance review. And these things don't use themselves. And our company spends a lot of time and money on ensuring that we're buying and implementing the right technology. So it helps me take advantage of all the technology that we have. And then also more importantly, our company, as I said, is going and investing a lot of money to help us be good servants to our clients, good colleagues. And adoption is just not going to happen just by sending out an email saying, oh, hey, why don't you go use this technology? So you know, tactically, what I've seen is when uh, my organizations that use digital adoption internally have gone and adopted a new system, it's pretty awesome. You might have a pop-up pull onto your screen and freeze everything saying, hey, you haven't updated your forecast for this contract, or you have not updated the client presentation. So what it really does is it really just drives that type of behavior. It, it's it's kind of like, in a way, think about when you're a kid and your parents make you eat a lot of vegetables. For me, it was carrots. <laughs> I hate, I hated carrots and shout out to my amazing mom, but that was what she made me do. And I resisted, and I resisted and I had carrots. And then finally I grew and, and became a grown up. It's the exact same thing here. Like we as salespeople, we are hardwired to have tunnel vision where, you know, we might not be able to pay attention to something for a little bit because we're so laser focused on helping our clients implement, utilize our technology and evaluate our technology that it can seem like a distraction. But our sales ops organization, shout out to them as well. They're fantastic. Just like a mother giving their kid vegetables says, you need to adopt this. It's going to help you do your job. And what digital adoption does, it makes it very easy for you to adopt those technologies, to do your job better, to make sure that you have accurate data and that you're not just relying on little reminders or emails. So it really is just really kind of amazing in terms of driving adoption, but also helping with those critical business processes that I use. So, so yeah, I mean, there's, there, there's so many different examples. We could probably talk about it forever. Fantastic. It was capsicum for me, by the way. <laughs> What's that? It was capsicum for me. What carrots was for you was capsicum yes. for me. <laughs> so capsicum. So I, I, I lived in Australia when I was very young and I didn't know what it was. Is that, are, is capsicum onions? No, what, capsicum what? is not onion. Capsicum is like a pepper, green, yellow, red, yes. you get different colors of it. <laughs> That's it. Well, hey, kudos to your mom and dad for making <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so fun aside now beyond the client facing account leaders what other roles in a sales organization benefit from that because you are well yeah. with all the sales personas right so how do you think each and every persona has benefited from that yeah well let's start with sales ops i mean just think about it like you know we're a startup company we have investors we need to accurately portray how we are doing you know what where the business is what the renewal rates are and if you're a publicly traded company, there's probably even more eyes on that. And sales ops yeah. is really the driving engine behind that 100% of the time. So they need good data right away. They need us to update things quickly. And they need to accurately portray the state of the business to their reporting line all the way up to the CEO on a regular basis. And if you have account people that are going in and not really using technology, not doing what they need to do in terms of updating, you know, providing information, keeping everybody in the loop, it's going to create yeah. problems all the way to the top when it comes to reporting. So I don't think people think about digital adoption that way. They think about sometimes as just task completion, but it's all about, you know, business planning and, and being, being able to have honest and accurate data and information to your investors, to your shareholders, to everybody. So it's absolutely critical. And I'll tell you this, I have workplaces without digital adoption. And typically the process will be somebody will email me and then they'll Slack me and then it'll be in the middle of a meeting and it won't happen. With this technology, you can drive the behavior that you need from your sales folks in order to really accurately portray everything you need to the executive level all the way up. So I can't emphasize enough how much sales operations benefits from this and how critical it is. And that's why you see sales ops as buyer and the person that implements it, whereas my role is the one that actually uses it. 
you know, business development representatives that are going and working hard to develop new meetings and contacts. Yeah. A lot of them are new. And some of us have been in these roles for over a year and they don't know who we've talked to or what we've done by enforcing us to be very, very specific about what we've done in the CRM, which you do through digital adoption technology. It drives the behavior. It makes the job easier for your BDRs. Customer success. It's no secret that WhatFix has the best customer success organization in the world. CSAT ranking, everything. But, you know, I go and do meetings with my folks. They do meetings and then we do meetings together. And in terms of information sharing, if we're not completing very, very accurate data information in our core CRM, those collaborative instances are just not going to be as helpful. Your direct manager, right? Um, wouldn't it be great? I mean, it is great because we, we drink our own dog food. If your direct manager doesn't have to bother you to get certain things done within your CRM, that helps them. And then that helps their relationship with their manager. So there's so many different roles and functions that can benefit from this. I think one challenge is, you know, speaking for myself, maybe I'm projecting, is we don't necessarily have time for this stuff or it's just not on our radar. The key is, I think, to make sales operations understand, and many organizations do, the types of behavior that they can drive for their account teams and sales leaders through digital adoption. Gosh, there's so many other roles too, but those, let's just stick with those for now. It's a great question. Yeah. By the way. yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was wonderful. I think anyone working in the sales department, if they listen to what you have to say about this, will actually at least go look it up and try to understand what this is all about and how they can benefit from this. So thank yeah, one you. One last point. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry to interrupt. I was going to say, it's kind of like if you're a sales up person, just think about like a blank canvas, right? And you have all sorts of information about behavior that you need to drive and challenges and adoption problems with your sales force. You can go ahead and add to that canvas all of the business processes and things that you know are critical. And like I said, you can drive that behavior, you know, get, get people to eat their vegetables, adopt their technology. It's, it's so critical. All right. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much for telling us that. Uh, now you are an account manager, right? You have to deal with tons of people every day, all your clients. So can you tell us a little bit about the different clients you have and how they are adjusting to that? Because it's a new concept for everybody. And they also come from a very diverse pool of industry. So can you tell us a little bit about how every industry perceives that or people, your clients from various industries perceive that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... I think a huge part of working in an emerging technology category is about educating and evangelizing. So I've, I've talked to some people, some mentors, and, and they told me, you know, in the 80s or 90s, it might have been more about taking people, you know, out for golf, giving them attention, hanging out. But in this yeah. role, it's really about trying to educate and evangelize them on what this really is, right? It's not really a training tool. It's a holistic type of program that drives adoption and ROI from software. And as we know, software spend is one of the top three spends in an enterprise worldwide, yeah. right? So I think a lot of the misconceptions that I might hear about are, you know, it's a, just a basic tool or it's only a relevant when uh, technology is actually rolling out for the first time, right? So I have clients that have had the same system for eight, nine, or 10 years. But the reality is, for example, their workforce, their users are people like yourself, Aria, that have grown up with really, really good technology, right? <laughs> and therefore their standards are higher. And when it comes to the employee experience and employees being happy, they don't want to deal with clunky 1980s technology, right? So oh, that's sure. been a driver uh, in some organizations. There's tons of examples. Gosh, like for example, healthcare insurance or other areas where there's patient information, Traditionally, you know, in healthcare, you know, certain demographics might be trained to call a call center to figure out information about a claim. But think about how great it is when you can find a way to help an agent in a call center in real time be able to maybe make the call shorter or maybe be able to provide guidance and directions to the person through other digital channels to avert that call or to avert a support ticket. Um, those are some great examples. You've seen, you know, during COVID, there were state governments that went and actually hired people to do contact tracing, which basically is the concept of contacting people that have COVID and trying to figure out where they've been so you can inform other people 
that yeah. they were in an area where there was COVID to try to save people from getting sick and trying to save lives. Now, a lot of these state governments, they hired people to make calls and be contract tracers, and they might use a Salesforce or a sugar CRM or something like that. These people don't have time to learn technology. They want to save lives and they want to contact people so they don't get sick. That's other examples. Compliance is huge, right? So think about all the you know life sciences type companies that have a lot of regulatory things that people have to abide by. If people don't fill out information right and they don't know, that can really mess up the, the drug discovery process, the FDA approval process. There's so many different ways that it can actually be applied. So it's really, really critical, I think, to make sure that people understand, like with DAP, you see a lot of the thought leadership around Salesforce, Workday, which is fantastic and great. But the reality is any mobile application or web application where there is digital friction, where you think you can make a business product better, uh, a business experience better for users is a candidate for digital adoption. So, so many different ways. And what's great is that, you know, you read Gartner and Forrester, there's going to be so many more use cases and applications of this moving forward. You know, another example I thought of supply chain, right? So I had clients, we know the supply chain changes that, that happened a year ago is really, really challenging. A lot yeah. of the breakdowns that in those processes were due to, you know, digital errors from what my clients tell me. So finding a way to get consumers the goods they want that they paid for on time yeah. is absolutely critical. And that's done through a holistic digital transformation program. So you're asking some great questions, Arya. And I must say your name it reminds me of Arya Stark from Game of Thrones, my favorite Game of Thrones character. I wish I could be as fierce as her at times. I really hey, do. You're doing a great job. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so also this reminds me that we had Kerry on the show one time. You were interviewing Kerry and she was from Boston Scientific. And everything she told about, you know, the number of tools and regulations they have to deal with, the number of equipments that they make and to track everything and how DAP is helping them. That was also very insightful. Thank you for hosting that episode, by the way. Thank you for bringing your client to the show. That was yeah. amazing. Shout, shout out to Boston Scientific as well, based here in Boston, obviously. They're great. Lucky to work with them. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of cool to be able to educate and evangelize and show them the power of something that is new, but really has unlimited potential. Unlimited potential, for sure. You can apply it anywhere and everywhere, and you will definitely see a change in efficiency, productivity. You get a good ROI, and plus money. Every company invests in each and every software that they onboard for their employees. It's really important to get full use out of it. Like There'll be so many employees in a company knowing just like, three things about one software that they have to use. But I think with something like that, you get, at least get to explore the entire platform to however much you can use it and take something out of that money that they're spending on you. Yeah, you, you said it entirely correct. Like, you know, the, the global enterprise software spend, it, it's a runaway train in a good way. It's not going down. It's going to continue yeah. increase. And there's going to continue to be amazingly smart, capable people that create amazing technology that you're going to want to use. So the more you buy, the more you need to adopt and the more you need to make sure the software is used the way it was intended. So you're, you're entirely on point with that, Arya. And the more you need lubrication with that adopting, like it is very important for it to be very user-friendly, very customizable. Right. Nice. Oh, one, one, five, one point um, I, I didn't mention is, yeah. uh, you know, we talked about like how hard it is to implement new technologies, but the reality is existing technologies change all the time. So I had a mini panic attack. I'm not serious. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, a week ago, there had been an acquisition and the interface entirely changed. And I just needed to quickly find some information about, you know, paying for my kids hockey, for example. And they didn't have digital adoption. I ended up on the phone. And that's just a microcosm of technology in general. You'll see yeah. interfaces change. Salesforce, Workday, custom applications, supply chain applications, so it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's not like you go in the gym for two or three months, get ripped, and then you stop. You need to continue to kind of foster and invest your time to make sure these digital experiences are good because the apps are going to change and you're going to have users that experience friction. So, yeah. Thank you. That was extremely insightful. And I had a great time listening to your thoughts. I'm sure our listeners will too. And thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for agreeing to be on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's great. I always love working with you, Aria.
And uh, yeah, who knows? One day you could host one of the top 10 podcasts. Thank you. <laughs> Let's hope for that then. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. My second guest on today's podcast is Akhil. Akhil is a BDR leader with over seven years of experience in the suspect prospect client conversion cycle and new business opportunity identification. He oversees a team of 10 plus BDRs across US and EMEA region. His team works with companies to maximize the potential of their technology investment. Having just completed two years at Watsfix, I'm sure he has some insightful thoughts to share. Welcome to the podcast, Akhil. This is the Digital Adoption Show. Today, our journey is to understand how different sales personas view digital adoption. So we have, we spoke to Nick previously. He is an account manager. And now we have you, you are a BDR manager. So to begin with, my first question to you would be, what is the prospecting tech stack that you and your team use? And how are you fast tracking the tech stack enablement? Any tools, any tips that you have for our listeners? Right. So see the basics of the prospecting tech stack, you know, starts with something like an outreach. So we have outreach where we run our sequences, we do our phone calls, we do our uh, analytics bit of how our messaging is being performing, how our calls, you know, call metrics look like, what are our connect rates, open rates, reply rates. So basically, the entire analysis of uh, our cold outreach is done on a platform called outreach.io. So that is what I would call the bread and butter of a BDR. And okay. 90% of a BDR sign would go on outreach. So it's very important for a BDR to learn and understand how outreach functions. What are the tips and tricks to get the best out of a prospecting tool like outreach? Right. So that's number one. We have outreach. Number two, you know, very important for any BDR is to get the right information or the contact information of the prospects that you want to reach out. So we use something called Zoom Info where it just syncs up with your sales navigator. And when you're searching up on your prospects in those accounts, you are provided with the most accurate phone numbers and email IDs, which will eventually go into your outreach when you're running your sequences, right? So that is number two. We also use a demand base, which gives us intent signals on which accounts to prioritize. Then we have something called a high spot, which is our content because we are able to share a lot of content, uh, case studies with the prospects. And it also gives us the analytics of how the engagement looks like for the collaterals that we've shared with the prospects. And of course, the CRM, right? So that is, again, the, the core application of the tool where a sales function is built around. And uh, we have Salesforce, which is integrated with all of the other applications that I mentioned. So Salesforce plays a very vital role in, in general for any sales rep, any media, or any sales leader or a media manager, because, you know, that is where we are tracking everything around pipeline, everything around revenue, everything around our reporting our focus, our dashboards. So most of our end that we have on a particular account or on a particular contact, on a particular opportunity, on a particular deal that we closed or the loss drop, right? So all of this is connected in, in our CRM, which is Salesforce. So these are the main tech stack that my team currently, you know, as Yaz is using. And to answer your second question, how are we fast tracking the tech stack enablement? So as soon as a new BDR joins the fix, the first step is to get them access to all of these tools and also introduce them to what fix overlays. So we have a lot of tools, we have panels, we have beacons, we have self-help overlaying on top of these applications. So with the help of the enablement team and also with the help of what fix on top of these applications, we are fast tracking the enablement. We want to make sure that the BDRs know exactly how to use these tools, become proficient in these tools as soon as they can so that they can start delivering and hitting their quotas. Or you just said you use what fix over all these applications when you onboard BDRs. So how is it helping you? Do you think it's caused a change? Do you think it's helping you? And 
Yes. So as a, you know, as a media manager or as a sales manager or a sales leader, you know, CRM is everything that we have to check in, into the internal of the account. Like I mentioned, the reports and everything. So there's a very famous saying that which even other sales leaders would definitely relate to is if it's not on the CRM, it does not exist. Right. So basically, if any intel, any conversation that you've had is not on the CRM, it's not visible to your leaders. It's not visible to your management. We don't know that such conversations are happening or the deals are moving in from certain stages to another stages, right? So when what fix overlays these applications and then when these new BDRs, especially if, if it's a fresher coming straight out of college joining us with next to zero knowledge into what applications are used in sales organizations. So when they are introduced to these applications, they get overwhelmed with all of this information coming in from the enablement team as well as from their managers. But why they are on these applications, what fixes their as an in-app guidance, as an in-app assistance to these reps. So basically they are not moving out of the application while they're learning how to complete these tasks. So we call it something called learning in the flow of work. So you're completing the task while you're also learning how to do it. And this is very important for, for a BDR leader like myself, because jumping up of a sales rep or a BR, we want this time to be as shortened as we can, because we want the rep to start delivering the numbers, start hitting the code, start generating those meetings, start generating that pipeline for the sales team as soon as they can. And when what fix comes into the picture, you know, what the difference that we have noticed in our onboarding and enablement is that the proficiency or the time taken for a particular BDR to become proficient or most efficient on an application has gone down. So by the time the rep is let's say three weeks into the admin session, we have them completely accustomed or acquainted with the platforms. They know all the tools, they know the tips and tricks, how to make most out of these tools while they are prospecting. And also, I mean, in this world right now, when there are tools sending out automated emails, you know, AI doing everything and anything that a BDR can do. So to stand out from the norm in anybody's inbox, you have to know how to leverage these tools and applications to your advantage. So it's it's very different from how we were prospecting back, let's say, five, ten years ago. And and right now, like there are so many applications, so many tools which can help a BDR become more efficient in their day-to-day jobs. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 100%. So I think you've already kind of answered my second question, which was going to be if you could draw a comparison between the traditional BDR training versus now when you have something like DAP on your application. Is there anything else you would like oh, to yeah. say? Oh, yeah. So just wanted to shed some light on how traditional training works, right? So I- I'll take an example of where I have come from. So before my stint at Academy, I was with an organization which was a B2B platform as a service company. So the enablement process there was very different. We were not exposed to the idea of digital adoption. And we had very traditional training methods like Zoom calls happening in classroom training sessions. And yeah. we had PDFs, we had videos shared with us. We had snippets of, let's say, GIF to show us exactly how stuff works inside a sales force, right? So all of this information was shared with us during the onboarding period. And our job was attending the in-person sessions with the enablement team, then going back to all the documents or PDFs or videos they've shared with us, learn from there and try and implement it on the application or the system that yeah. they were using. So we had sales force there. We had different uh, meeting tools there. We had different contact enrichment tools there. So all of this, you know, element which we had for process and for application, it was happening in a different place. And I was applying it in work where what happens is the learning curve kind of drops down and there is a lot of stuff I was not able to retain. The learning retention goes down. Yeah. So I'm always going back and forth from the learning material and the place of work, which is my application, my system that I'm trying to get better at because I have to start sending, I have to start getting those meetings in. But my time is mostly spent jumping from the traditional training methods to my system. So the major difference that I see that makes a lot of impact right now with something like Vortex is that we are learning in the flow of work, right? And there is a lot of convenience and reduction in employee frustration, right? Because if I am exposed to a lot of applications, which I don't know how to use, and I'm constantly asking for help or looking out for account repositories to find the learning material. So it, it becomes a little frustrating for that particular employee and the employee experience also goes down. And it is 
very important to give the best experience we can to a new employee when they are just onboarding. I think there are stats around that if your new joinees or your new employees have a better experience when they're onboarded, they stay with you longer. Attrition being a, a major challenge in sales media function, of course, we want to make sure we are able to provide the best experience to the reps that join us and to ensure that we can actually retain them and probably reduce the attrition in the sales organization. Understandable. Also, I agree yeah. with you because I think sales is one department where it is the most easy for employees to get frustrated. And there is a lot of retention that has to happen because they need to know the in yeah. and out about the entire product that they're out there to sell. Remember each and every detail yeah. whenever asked. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's amazing mm -hmm. that there's something like this helping them learn by doing it so that and it also helps them retain much more because I heard somewhere that yeah. learning while doing increases the retention rate of whatever you are trying to grasp. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So you have been in this space for the longest time. What is the day-to-day -day challenge that you face as a BDR manager and how do you overcome mm -hmm. it? Or is there any tool which has helped you in the process? Because yeah. all sales profession, I believe, will benefit from this because you all face challenges day-to-day -day. and if you have something which you've used to overcome it, it will benefit everyone. Can yeah. you share that? Absolutely. So I think I kind of touched upon this point. So the saying that I mentioned, right, if it's not on the CRM, it doesn't exist. So for any media manager, or any sales manager, any sales leader, we are always analyzing, trying to understand what's happening. How do we improve the pipeline? How do we accelerate the pipeline, improve the quality of the pipeline? So when we are looking into Salesforce, it's very important for us to be looking at the right data. And I'm always following up with the team put in the notes, put in the contact roles, put in these three, four, five yeah, data points and those an opportunity. Because while we are trying to understand how do we accelerate pipeline, how do we improve the quality of the pipeline that we are sending forward to the sales team, it becomes very important to make sure the right data is put into the CRM, which is Salesforce. So a lot of this can be solved through walkthroughs and all of this can be solved through beacons where we make sure that the input into uh, Salesforce as a CRM is accurate, which is going to improve the quality of reports that we generate because the data is accurate, which is going to again help sales ops in a lot of ways, like reducing the support cost, reducing the effort that they're putting into the data hygiene exercises. Because if we are able to uh, nudge or handhold a sales rep or a BDR to input the right data into the CRM, all of this effort gets reduced for the sales jobs. And on the other side, for sales leaders, this improves the accuracy of their forecasting, accuracy of their reports that eventually they would be presenting to the management on trying to understand, okay, this is where we close this quarter at because of X amount of pipeline that has come in from last quarter and created within this quarter. So data accuracy in general is something which does benefit the sales leaders in understanding how the future looks like in terms of forecasting and also understanding how the current processes can be optimized and analyzed to get better at. Because we do a lot of exercise acceleration. We, you know, at every stage, we are trying to improve the quality of discovery that we do because yeah. we are trying to bring in prospects and yeah. we are trying to improve the discovery process because we want to be talking to the right people. And obviously send in a quality pipeline into the sales funnel for the sales yeah. team to close. Uh, thank you so much for answering that. Uh, those are all yeah. the questions I had for you. I had a great time uh, asking these questions because like I said, I, I enjoy talking about all these things because I know exactly how it affects a life of anybody from the GTM teams, right? Yeah. Whether it's sales, it's BDR, it's sales ops, REM ops. Something like a DAP definitely adds a lot of value and we have seen results in a lot of the customers that have implemented what fix on top of their CRMs. A lot of case studies we have, you know, which which definitely you can find it on our website. If there's anything, definitely reach out to us on our website. You can find all the coordinates there to get in touch with us. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I hope everyone who's listening learned something out of it. Okay. Perfect. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you so much for having me. Bye bye. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned as we bring you fresh perspectives every week on the Digital Adoption Show. We are thrilled to announce that our podcast is now live on multiple platforms, including YouTube, 
Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and much more. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes filled with insightful conversations. We greatly appreciate your support and encourage you to leave a review, comment, or a rating to help us continue delivering valuable content. If you have any questions on the topic, feel free to ask in the comment section below. Thank you.